the Booker of the Year then closes the event with a world championship match between Adam Cole, who nobody believes deserves a world title match because he just got beat by the mascot, and Adam Page, who nobody believes is the world champion because he didn't beat anybody until he won the thing. And they announced Adam Cole is undefeated. And they announced he was undefeated when we when we just saw him lose to the devastating hug perpetrated on him by pockets. And their statistics are supposed to mean something. They said, well, it's, that was an unsanctioned match. Yeah, well, then you should have pulled the sanction from my eyeballs because I saw it. And at this point, like I said, three and a half, four and a half hours in this show, they're starting this with two guys with no, and not that they needed any more stipulations, but a regular match with no furniture, no no disqualification, no stipulation, no special rules after they have done literally everything that a human being can do to another human being in the previous three hours. This again is the, the kind of thing that both these guys would have gone to the booker in the old days if this situation is pre had presented itself and said, are you fucking kidding? Are you out of your fucking mind? You want us to go out there now after you've done all this shit. But, it, but that happened sometimes, but rarely because they didn't normally send people out to do th something after they had just disemboweled the fucking nuns from the goddamn local convent in front of everybody. So why did Adam Cole come out with a military gimmick on some kind of military shoulder pads and flak jacket thing? Is he in, is he in the army now? He looked ridiculous. Well, Let's be what, honest. He looked ridiculous. But what did, what was the, I don't understand the military. I thought it was a video game. Tie -in. Thing. I don't even know. I thought it was is a video it? game thing. I don't know. Well, it, it looked like camouflage shoulder pads and flak jacket with uh, things on his arms. Is, now he's dressing up like he's in a video game. Maybe he's going into the old Navy. <laughs> or the Salvation Army. Or the Salvation Army. <sighs> or the Merchant Marines. God damn it. I was about to go there. You're about to <laughs> Oh. Or the right guard. Oh, uh, but good. anyway, he's in the army now. He's not behind the plow. You'll never get rich. So cowboy, uh, cowboy Cole follows Sergeant Cole, or cowboy Page rather follows Sergeant Cole. He the cowboy came out in a vest with fluorescent pink tassels on it, just like all the famous Funk Brothers and. All the cowboy Bob Ellis, he used to wear a lot of fluorescent pink. The crowd would not have been into this as much as they were early if they hadn't figured out that both guys' names were Adam and they could have fun with the chance to excite themselves. And, you know, both these guys' shit looks good. They work hard. I saw a hint of a tan on Adam Cole. Maybe he's taking himself seriously again. And the, their work, their execution of everything looks good and crisp. But again, it's just, maybe they're bad influences on each other here because the psychology that I thought Adam Cole might be able to bring to people like Adam Page, it looks like he's lost it rather than Page has gotten it. You know, again, they couldn't do anything that the people already hadn't seen. But, you know, they've got to, they've got to, they're just doing everything. It's like a modern style match where nothing means anything five seconds after it's been done. You'll hit somebody with one or two high impact moves and then hit the ropes and charge at them. And they'll just come back like nothing's wrong and just fucking hit you with something. Did you, at one point, Paige power bombed Adam Cole on the apron and it made a sickening noise, and it looked like it hurt. I'm sure it did, and Cole sells it, and Paige immediately goes up to the top and does that goofy moonsault backwards off the top that he does in every match, and he missed him. He missed him. 
And it, it he didn't he had just power bombed the fucking guy on the apron of the ring. It looked good. Cole was selling. Be like George Costanza, leave on the high note, but no, then he climbs up and does a moonsault. And they show a replay of it where not only do you see that he missed it, but that that Adam Cole tried to break his fall on the way down so he wouldn't get hurt. And again, if this was if this had been a TV match, it had been rocking. If it had been a main event of a two and a half hour show without Punk and MJF on it, great. But almost three hours and forty five minutes in, plus an hour pre show after all the other shit, everybody was tired. And everything they hit each other with looked great, but nobody sold it or barely bumped for it. They just go back and forth. It they have to do the top rope shit where they inst- they both come off the top rope, so they have to take forever to help each other up there, so that they can execute a backflip power slam that it's obvious that both guys cooperated to do. So they've risked their health and safety, and it's meaningless because it looked fake. If you can't do something without the other guy's obvious cooperation, just don't do it. Because then you're risking your health for... It doesn't matter if the move looked cool. That's not the point of wrestling. The point of wrestling is to make it look like a contest. If you can't do it without obvious cooperation, don't fucking do it. Cool-looking moves. Then here comes O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, and I'm like, thank fucking God. Let's get done with this and Cole hit the Panama sunrise on the floor on Adam page rolled him in the ring got a two count and then Cole kicked him in the balls and hit the Panama sunrise and his knee and got a two count and then Adam Cole hit him with a super kick while he was on his knees and that looked great looked like he hit him right in the face so he went for a second one and went straight over the top of his head, but slapped his leg anyway. So he missed him, but it didn't sound like it. But then after he has done all of these things, he goes for his knee and Paige just pops up with a clothesline. And now he's fine. There's nothing wrong. He jumps out. He does a buckshot lariat flip. But Cole super kicks him on the buckshot. And again the second time. And again the third time. Three super kicks. Page is face down. Cole doesn't cover him. Doesn't try to win. Because O'Reilly and Fish are getting a table. And they set it up at ringside. And even though Adam Page has just had all this shit done to him, he pops up and gives Adam Cole the dead eye off the apron, head first, through the table, to the concrete floor. But that's not the finish, because here comes the dork order. Fuck me. And they get in a big fight at ringside with Fish and O'Reilly, and they all, you know what they did, Brian? They fought off. They just fought off. (sighs) You know, this would have been a Twilight Zone episode if I'd have hit the power on my TV to try to turn it off, and it wouldn't work. No matter what I do, every channel this is on, it won't turn off. It won't stop. And then remember, Adam Cole has been dead-eyed off the apron through a table to the floor. Now Paige hits the buckshot lariat, and Adam Cole gets the rope. He got dead-eyed through a fucking table 30 seconds ago. He just took the fucking world champion's finish. He gets to the rope. Rope break. Adam Page ties Adam Cole to the top rope with his belt and super kicks him three times. And as soon as he does that, Cole stands right back up and super kicks Adam Page. (laughs) And then Adam Page finally hits the, the knee that Cole does with the knee pad lowered and then hits another buckshot, the same as he's hit five times already. One, two, three. Three hours and 55 minutes to get to that point. Their world championship match degenerated into an indie super kick festival 
because as we've said, it appears that instead of Adam Cole taking his experience and high level of training he got in NXT over there, he's left all that and joined the trampoline cowboy gang, and they're just going to do this shit until they're finished doing it. And this match went over a half an hour. I mean, it, it looks like a goddamn... It, it it's it's a it's a pie chart or a graph of a witch's hat. It's it starts at the very bottom. It goes straight up to the top in the middle, and then comes straight back to the bottom at the end. That was the Venn diagram or whatever of this show. If they could have left off two hours in, wow, a keeper. But then came the next two hours. Did I miss anything on that world title match? I don't think so. I really didn't like it. I was falling asleep. It just didn't feel like a world title match. Adam Cole, I've never been, since the time I've been watching Adam Cole, I've never been less interested in Adam Cole than I am right now. And Adam Page, I don't know, he won the title and now all the air just feels like it's been taken out of his sails and it's only because of his promos and his outfits and the way he comes across. <laughs> he doesn't come across like a world champion. Booking. Yeah. Well, it also the two years of booking that did everything but get him ready to be the world champion. Well, Jim, Woo. I want to tell you about the buy-in show, but before we get there, perhaps you're a wrestling podcaster who does a lot of work and has a lot of long hours, and you're forced to stay up late to watch a really crappy main event that's supposed to be for a world title match. You hear that the guy who owns that company is a billionaire, and his dad's a billionaire, too, and he's a partner. Maybe you think, hey, it's time to sue. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I would, I would not think that. Those things don't logically go together. You're reaching, and you have, you have failed to grab the gold donut pillow. You have failed to grab the brass ring, Brian Last, and what you've done is you've simply given me a nonsensical transition to advertise the availability and services of one of the finest barristers to ever cross the legal pathway. I'm talking about none other than West Virginia's greatest litigator, one of the finest personal injury attorneys in all the United States of America, this man. Call Stephen P. Or two. Still the rest. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to a podcast where one of the on-air personalities gives absolutely no thought or effort into his commercial transition and the other partner is left to take up the slack, then you need to call the law offices of Stephen P. New at 888-692-8084 or just go online at newlawoffice.com because there you will find a man who will fight for your rights and principles to the very last man. He'll, he will fight to the last man. He will fight to the last member of your family is dead. That's how long Stephen P. New will fight before he gives up the fight. Don't you agree with that, Brian? You're probably mad at me right now for knocking your transition. No, it's all but right. Stephen P. New is a man who will fight for your rights. Ian, and hey, if some of your family ends up living and he doesn't have to fight to the last man, even better. But nevertheless, Stephen P. New is the man who will fight for your rights. As we've mentioned, so many of the lawsuits have already been filed. The class action against the big pharmaceutical companies for the opioid addicted babies that were born with the opioid withdrawal syndrome and et cetera because of their misrepresentations. But he's done a lot for all the Cult of Cornet members, as we've mentioned, the various poisoned groundwater and the, the cases that he's taken and the, the old lady that State Farm didn't want to give her her money. He helped her out. And he can do the same thing for you folks. And he's also a title sponsor for the big 
event coming up in Chillicothe this coming Saturday night, March the 12th, from Big Time Wrestling and Bobby Fulton, where Stephen P. New and New Law Office is the official sponsor there. He loves to bring you your wrestling, and he loves to bring you your justice. And one of these days, we've got to get some way or another where we can put those those two things together, wrestling and justice, because usually there ain't no justice in wrestling. Anyway, Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084. When you go to court with Stephen, all you're going to hear is this.